Hello and thank you for joining me um, for today's webinar. Welcome to Education City. Um, today I'm just going to take you on a whistle stop tour going through the basics of Education City um, that you need for this distance teaching and learning. Um, for any new users watching to get today, welcome. Um, for anybody who's listened to any of our previous webinars, welcome back. Um, my name's Hayley. I am the education consultant here at Education City, and I was a teacher before joining um, this wonderful company. Um, so I hope that these webinars are a great way of me being able to give back to you guys. Um, if you've got any questions as we're going along, please do wait until the end where I'll provide you with our email address and you can send them over along with any feedback that you might have or even some ideas that you might have for future webinars. We welcome all of those. Now, just before we get started, I should point out that the account I'm going to use today is a made up account. The children don't exist, the teachers don't exist, so I'm not breaking any GDPR rules by showing you that. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that it is an English account um, covering tools um, within the National Curriculum for England. But please don't worry if you are listening today from Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales or anywhere else, because when you log in, it will appear the same. But obviously you will be curriculum mapped to whatever curriculum you might follow. So on our tour of Education City. I'm hoping we are going to look at these areas. So user setup, core subjects, creating folders and tracking progress. These are the areas that I feel will benefit you the most in these 15 to 20 minutes. OK, so let's have a look, shall we? Oh, bear with me. Let's find that. There it is. My apologies there for a moment. Here it is. Here is our Education City website. Again, for those of you who um, have used Education City maybe before, you may be familiar with our old home page. Um, what I'm going to do is to use our new new home page for today, just because I think it's a much more easier to navigate um, page um, and it might help you out a little bit more. So the first area on our account was our users. Now, this icon just here, as you can see just there, manage users just there, and on the left-hand side, it is also repeated. Um, either of those will take you through into our user accounts. Now you'll be able to see here, we have our students, we also have our teachers and our administrators. It's really important that your users are set up so that you can create and assign um, My Cities to them. Now to set up users, if you are a parent listening today, you need to go to your teacher or your school to get your login details. And if you are a teacher, you need to have a word with your administrator for the account, who will be able to provide these tools for you. It's really easy to do. You can add students in individually, but I do suggest using the upload and edit function. If we head into that. You'll be able to see here, we do have our upload a CSV file. This is something that can be imported from your, um, your management system, whichever management system that you're using. Um, but I will say that please make sure it is in the same order as listed here. So your unique ID, first name, last name, class name, username, password, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you want to, we do have a sample spreadsheet just here that you can download and you can obviously use that to input your data into. And that is um, listed in the same as is um, suggested down here. When you've done that, um, spreadsheets can be pasted in and files can be uploaded. Simply click next and that will take you through these four areas until that's completed. So it is a really simple tool. The only work you have to do is to pop things in that same order, but that shouldn't take you too long if you're using copy and paste. Now I'm just going to head back, leave that. I'm not going to make any changes today. Now 
when your admin has done that, they will be able to provide you with your login details. And as a teacher, once you have your login details, you'll be able to find your class, click into the little box next to that, actions and print logins just there. You can also print a um, parent letter. Um, this is um, a letter that will tell them how to log into Education City, how to find their work, and what their child's login details are. Now, obviously, it does say print here. There is nothing to stop you from copying and um, pasting that into an email if you want to send that out digitally. So that is all about our logins. And obviously, really important admin, getting those set up and obviously teachers getting your logins from your administrator. I need to point out as well, teachers, please make sure your email addresses are correct in your login area, um, as this is what we will use to identify you if you have um, forgotten your login details. So please make sure that that is done. So let's head back to the home page. The next thing on our agenda is our core subjects. Now we are um, a core curriculum resource covering maths, English, science, and if I scroll down, we have our quick link there to our online safety. Now, the great thing about these um, tiles here, they will take you directly to your curriculum map. And again, if you're looking from um, Scotland, Northern Ireland, etc., this is where you will see um, tools for the curriculum of excellence, for example. In the English one, you can find your year group, find whatever it is you're looking for in terms of the unit and then your objective here. Click onto those and it will show you the tools that we have that fulfill that one resource. Now, don't worry about the different tool names at the moment. Um, we will have a webinar coming up later on that will explain to you the different tool types and their uses. But for now, please do go and explore those. And if you want to pop things into a folder, if I just hover over there, you can see that says add to my city. You can click into that. You can pop into any folder you may have previously created, or you can create a folder there and then click on create and just make sure you save that at the bottom there. If you are popping into a folder, you can click on that and again, save again. So really easy ways of adding things into your my cities. And this is the same whether you're on English, math, science or computing. If I just head back to that home page, that button just there in the top left hand corner and have a look at the online safety tools that we offer. Obviously, really important at the moment if children are using computers to do their learning digitally, we do have tools that will look at staying safe when online um, just there and other tools that you have in understanding um, online usage. So really, really useful. And just here, if I just click on the subjects area, this is your subjects. Again, if I just extend out their left hand column, that is this tile just here. Just if I click on that, that will uh, take us to the same page just to show you that again. So this will take you into your subjects page. Now, again, really, really useful here. You can go in, you can have a look at your year group and you can actually find tools for for example, reading, and you can filter by the topic here as well. Um, any tools again, you'll see you've got that add to a My City where we can click on those little boxes, um, little plus sign, sorry. And again, it brings up that same page to add into a My City. Now, you may be kind of wondering at the moment what I'm on about with regards to a My City. A My City is a folder. And again, if I head over to our left hand column, you can see it's just there. And if I head back to the home page, you'll be able to find the My Cities here. Now, because Education City has upgraded your accounts to include that 24 hour access for students, um, it does mean that students have access to both their classwork and their homework. 
I would suggest, however, stick into using homework for the time being because homework is for home learning, classwork is for the school. So I do suggest using that homework not so as not to confuse students. Then it is a case of new homework. We can pop in something that we're working on. For example, we've got one pop up just there, times tables and create. And it will take us onto this page. Now, this is another way of searching for tools um, that you can add into your folder. So you can click on to add content just there. Search via a keyword such as multiplication and search. And then you'll find all of those tools that fulfill that criteria. We then um, can filter down even further. So for example, I might go into year four in order to pre prepare students for a multiplication tables check just there. Um, Obviously, they may not be doing those assessments this year, but it doesn't help to keep practicing. So we do have a multiplication tables check tool there. Um, we have a 10 seconds, a 20 seconds and a six second one as per the government standard. Now, because we are sending things home, it's always worthwhile just looking at the tablet friendly content at the moment. Most students will have a tablet as opposed to a laptop laptop or a computer but our tablet friendly content is available on a tablet as well as a laptop or a computer so just worthwhile keeping a, a note of that and then again we can have a look to see which objectives this particular tool fulfills and if we want to pop into a fold out we've got that lovely orange plus again that we can add tools in you can click into the picture to have a look at things and um, before you go ahead. But again, please don't worry about the different content types at the moment. Um, keep an eye out for that later webinar, which will show you those tools. And we can go through and we can find different tools to pop in. Those are the other two just there. Let's maybe add a couple of activities in there. Now, one thing I will tell you, activities, um, as recognised by this little um, sort of icon, do get marked for you when pupils complete them. So if I just click on to done, you can see those tools in there. Um, I'm just going to save that. You can edit these areas so you can edit the icon just there and you can pop a little note in for your students if you wish to. Um, and you can also lock things in an order if you want them to be done in a particular order. I'm just going to keep that open for the time being. Then it's literally a case of working across these blue tabs. So you've got your students. This is why it's a really good idea. You need to get those students uploaded onto your Education City account because you can then find that year group, click on the plus sign, and there they are already um, popped in. Um, for this to be allocated to. We can save them and then we head into our preferences. Now these are tools like um, the minimum score for a pass within all of our activities, um, whether you want a countdown um, timer on there, loads of ideas in there. Um, you know your children, you know what you want to work best. So have a look through those. Do you want a countdown timer on, off? Do you want an extended amount of time? Or do you want a quit finish button off or on, print function, things like that? I will draw your attention to the top here because if we do want to give this to students, we do have to publish it. So yes, and we can publish that indefinitely or we can schedule a time frame for some point in the future if you need to. So I'm just going to publish this indefinitely for now and save. And you can see now it has been published. So we've gone through our content, we've allocated to students and then we've gone through our preferences, including making sure we publish that to students. The next thing you can do is start tracking where your students are at. So you can click into any of these names and just remind you that these are made up names and these children do not exist. And you can have a look there. If I just scroll down, you can see we've got our colour coded system just here. All activities, when they have a go at them, their scores can be seen here. And because I set that um, score within the preferences section at 80%, if they don't get above that, 
it will stay at amber. Um, if they do, it will be green. So this is a great way of tracking where your students are at. If you have a particular group of students who are really struggling, you may want to go back into your preferences and bring down that minimum score just there again. So if I pop in 60% as an example, making sure I save, and if we head back to tracking, you'll see now it's at 60%. So you can monitor the progress of your students within each of those files. The other thing you can do, if I head back onto the home page, is to monitor your students via our success tracker. So if I open this up here, you can monitor for a year, a term, a half term, a key stage if you need to. And you can just select the year group, for example, the month and the date. And again, you can look at a class, a group or an individual. If you want to know about the groups function, have a look at one of our earlier webinars on YouTube that will explain that. So we can click on to go and it will bring up everything that our children have done. Now, all students work, and whether it be an activity or an assessment, both of those are marked for you. So you'll be able to see here any activities that have been completed. It will give you that the date that it was done and the score that they got. And any of our assessments are also marked for you. Now, we do have assessments. Um, please do explore those. You'll find those on the home page. Again, if I just open this out, click on the home page just there and you'll be able to have a look at those. Um, but for any formative assessments, um, children um, are also provided with an independent revision journal. And this is where the computer will prescribe content for children based upon the questions that they've gotten incorrect and pop it straight into that child's login. So you can have a look at that revision journal just here. They can print themselves a certificate and you can have a look at the questions and the answers that children gave to certain questions. So this might advise you as to what to put into those My Cities. Now, if I just head backwards along our breadcrumb trail, you can also export this data for um, any reports that you need to do. So lots of tools in there those are the four that i think you will need as teachers in order to set work and track the attainment of your students and as mentioned this is where you will find our assessments so loads of tools in there we do also have our quick links to our play live which are the fun online game all of our multiplication table tools and our phonics resources just there, as well as the online safety that I showed you earlier. We do also have our printable resource packs, really useful packs that, again, you can send home if you need to. And our teacher resource pack there that you'll find are full of really, really useful tools. You probably spend a lot of your PPA time making, so please do explore those. Finally, I'd like to tell you about our what fix. if I just open that up. Again, really useful tool that may answer any questions that you have for you. And you can also find our previous webinars on there as well. Finally, we've got our information just here. If you do need to get in touch with us, however, we do have our email address here. So if there is anything that you'd like to tell us about, please do let us know. You can send us an email um, and make sure you put the word webinar into the subject um, just there. There it is, just there. Um, thank you for taking the time to join me today. Please join us again for any of our future webinars. And don't forget, all of the webinars are recorded and are available on that What Fix or on our YouTube channel. Please, please do remember to stay safe. And I look forward to maybe seeing you again in the future. Thank you ever so much. Take care. Bye bye.